We are Team 1-4-3-8 Wolfpack Machina from Beverly, Massachusetts. Freight Renzi was our fifth year in FIRST programs and our second year in FTC. We're super excited to present the hardware and software that we worked all season on. Here's our robot. We use Fusion 360 to CAD our robot and our prototypes in Android Studio for all of our software development. However, to talk about our robot, we first have to talk about our overarching game strategy that has influenced all of our designs. The first part of our game strategy is that we have the adaptability to cross the barriers at any position. Most teams get stuck in the warehouse when the gap is blocked, but because of our suspension, we have the ability to enter and exit the barriers from any position and angle. The second part of our strategy is that we score ducks into the goal while spinning them off of the carousel. This means we can score a maximum of 54 extra points per match that very few other teams are capable of scoring. We designed our robot as an effective, innovative, and straightforward machine to carry out our strategy. In addition to this, another one of our main considerations has been to make everything as accessible and modular as possible, so that if anything requires maintenance or development, it is very easy for us to get to. For example, the outer plates come right off to provide easy access to the suspension pods, and the entire duct spinner assembly can be removed with just a few screws. Also, our control hub and all of our wires are easily accessible on the sides of the robot. We use an iterative design process to design all of the subsystems of a robot. We start with a concept idea, CAD a design in Fusion 360, build it, and then run targeted reliability and efficiency tests on that design. Then we make changes to the design based on the results. Additionally, since a robot is so modular, we can use this design process on multiple subsystems in parallel. The most innovative mechanical aspect of our robot is our independent suspension system. Our design works by supporting each wheel on the corner of a 4-bar linkage, which can deflect up and back in either direction. We chose suspension because it allows us to cross the barriers on the field at any location, allowing us to grab freight from the opposing alliance and making us very resistant to being blocked. Because of the seamlessness of our suspension, we are able to use the drive encoders to track the robot's position on the field even while traveling over the barriers. We also relocalize using distance sensors for additional reliability. We tested six iterations of our suspension to create a design with the least possible vertical displacement and horizontal deceleration. Since suspension is an inherently complex system, one of our main goals throughout this process was to make as straightforward, simple, and elegant a design as possible. For example, our current iteration is a direct simplification of our fifth iteration. We also met with engineers to discuss the mechanics and considerations behind suspension. For example, we learned that we should keep the unsprung mass low to make our system as effective as possible. Lastly, we use physics throughout our process, such as using free body diagrams to analyze the dynamics of the system and force meters to calculate the ideal spring constant for the rubber bands in our design. Our next mechanism is our duct spinner. Our duct spinner is at the end of a suspended arm that mechanically adapts to the robot's position relative to the carousel. This gives us an area of operation 8.9 times larger than a standard wheel and allows us to move to intake ducts while spinning, which is crucial to our strategy of cycling ducts. We made four duct spinner iterations. The main thing we learned from these iterations was that we needed a suspended arm to add compliance to the system, allowing us to maintain a high contact force with the carousel without damaging any servos. Now for our intake. Our intake consists of a main vertical roller that sweeps everything in and two side sweepers that act as a funnel, only allowing one piece of freight to enter at a time. Using two color sensors, our intake can also detect when freight is fully taken in and close the bucket. This allows the drivers to cycle quickly and reliably without worrying about penalties. In addition to this, our side sweepers are also able to intake ducts as soon as they fall from the carousel. The addition of our side sweepers made our duct intaking four times more reliable. Now for our depositor. Our depositor uses six parallel stages of linear slides, whose angle is controlled by a high torque motor. This gives us the reliability to score from close range while cycling, and the reach and rigidity needed to score ducks from the carousel. Lastly, we integrated our magnetic TSE mechanism onto the end of our depositor. This helps to keep our robot simpler, as all we had to do was add a magnet instead of a whole other arm. Our long slides, in combination with our suspension, give us the flexibility to score from anywhere on the field. 
For example, we can score into the shared hub from outside of the barriers, allowing us to work with our partner to ensure that we get the 20 points from tipping it to our side. And we can cycle diagonally from either warehouse if our side is blocked. These attributes make our robot very adaptable during matches. It can drive through parts of the field that most other robots can't reach, score from unorthodox places, and is very resistant to blocking in defense. That's all. Thank you for watching.